Say yes, sir. Hello, Frank. Hey, Dave. Thank Hi, you for guys. coming over, Frank. Oh, it was a wonderful day. President of the United States. Well, first, let me congratulate General Vesey, our nation's new 10th chairman, and I should have said 10th, not just new, 10th chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he's a 10 all right. <laughs> when I announced General Vesey's appointment last March, I referred to him as a soldier's soldier. That characterization was on the mark, but it was also something of an understatement. After being called to active duty in 1941, Jack Vesey received a battlefield commission at the Anzio Beachhead in 1944. He commanded forces in the United States, in Europe, Korea, Thailand, and Vietnam. And still, given the way things are in this town, I have a feeling his new assignment will be the most hair-raising of them all. <laughs> General, with all the flack you'll be getting, it might be a good idea to start wearing a helmet again. <laughs> but our new man possesses that unique blend of the seasoned combat leader and the perceptive strategist, a blend that makes him a true soldier statesman and worthy of the title Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Vesey, in selecting a man of your caliber, we also honor your profession and all those with whom you serve. And perhaps this is a good time to recognize General Bolte, who was your division commander in Italy during World War II and who is here. General. Nice to have you here. Well, Bodie, thank you for turning out such a fine soldier as Jack Vesey. In my speech at the United Nations last Thursday, I reminded the world of the words of a former Army Chief of Staff, Dwight Eisenhower, who said that our foreign policy is not difficult to state. We are for peace, first, last, and always. The truth of those words can't be challenged, but it's especially fitting for a former soldier to have said them. No one wants peace more than the soldier, for the soldier understands better than anyone the pain and destruction of war. And I know that General Vesey must carry inside him the, the sorrows of buddies lost on foreign fields and the memories of young men under his command who never returned home. But as the general would tell you, peace cannot be secured by words or hopes alone. The United States has a dual approach to international stability. On the one hand, we are committed to strengthening our defense readiness and military capabilities. At the same time, we also hope to enhance our security through negotiations on intermediate range missiles, on strategic nuclear weapons, on the prevention of accidental war, and on conventional force reductions. And I'm proud of that agenda for peace. General Vesey, as my principal military advisor, I'll look to you and the other members of the Joint Chiefs for counsel on how best to achieve our unselfish goals. But my additional command to you is keep us strong, keep us ready, so that we may keep the peace. Good luck and congratulations. And I shall now turn you over to the Secretary. Would you raise your right hand? I, John W. Vesey, Jr. I, John W. Vesey, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Sir. Very good. <laughs> members and all who are here.
Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. 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 Thank you.